This is the moment you've all been waiting for, the big reveal of the kitchen countertop area. But first, let's do a quick recap of part one. We started this project by removing the stove first, followed by the plumbing, taking the faucet, that sink, then it was time to pull the countertop. Next up, we started replacing some of the items we thought needed improvement. Then we were all done and it was ready to start on the new countertop. So where did we find the countertop that we used? It took us a while actually. We wanted to balance a couple things like weight and cost. And actually we found what we were looking for on the way back from the mountains. Linda popped into Ikea and found just exactly what we needed. And while Troy and Desi were hanging out in the parking lot, I was inside looking for a countertop that would match some of the other oak accents that we have in the camper. And eventually found a very close match with the Verena oak countertop. All right, now it's time for my favorite part. Let's not talk about it, let's be about it. Let's get on to the install. But stay around to the end of the video. Linda and I are gonna answer as many of your questions that we think you might have about why and how we did this. First up was to use the old countertop as a template for length that we needed for the new countertop. Then we used a circular saw to go ahead and make that length cut. Then use the old countertop again to make note of a little bump out we needed to cut and use the jigsaw to do that. Then we use the table saw to cut it down to the width that we wanted. And then finally we went ahead and sanded everywhere that we had trimmed it. Then it was time to take it to the camper to do a dry fit. Okay, so our countertop is cut, it's set in position. For us, the next step was to establish where the sink was going to be and then do the cutout. So before we got started, we took a measurement of approximately where the drain was. With some blue tape, we marked on the countertop where that would be located. Next, we used a template to go ahead and draw out the sink. And then we started cutting. So when I ordered this sink, one thing I didn't notice is that the drain was more to the center. Our old sink had it towards the back. So we ended up having to push this sink a little further back into the countertop than we would have liked. Next up, we decided to make some changes to the electrical. This camper only has one receptacle by the door. It wasn't very convenient for us, so we decided to add some in the countertop. Wines, Pines, and Canines has made this video for entertainment purposes. Before making any modifications to your gas or electrical systems in your RV, you should always consult with a professional in your area. Now back to the video. Not long after we bought the camper, we noticed that the electrical outlet was actually cracked. So we had gone ahead and changed that one out to a residential one already. So for this project, we just ran a second line out of the back of the box, then ran it across the back of the sink area, drilled a hole, brought the line through the centerpiece to a second outlet, and this outlet is where we plug in the pop-up. So that brings us to one of our favorite additions to this countertop, the electrical pop-up. So once we decided where we wanted to put the pop-up, the next thing was to grab the hole saw and go ahead and cut the hole. And once that hole was cut, it was time to assemble the pieces and get to the install. We applied some silicone to the edges of the countertop where the sink would sit before dropping it in. Next, we assembled the faucet while we could still easily get to it. Next step was to go ahead and hook up all the plumbing under the sink. Luckily, because we had made some modifications back in 2019 for a larger sink, we didn't have to make any further adjustments this time. We screwed the countertop to those countertop supports we put in in the previous video. Then we dropped in that new electrical pop-up, tightened it up, and it was on to the one last thing we had to do. The last thing we did, we changed out the mini blinds to a black color and we think it looks great. These blinds came from blinds.com, but they did require one easy mod. 
Because they didn't come with the end plugs, we had to use them off our old blinds. First, we had to take out this little silver piece, then spray painted the ends black and popped them in. So the install is pretty easy. There's just these two silver clips that you go ahead and open and it releases the blinds. Then to put the new one on, you just fit it into the little groove, relock those silver clips, and you're all done. We didn't even need to change the original hold down brackets. So Linda, do you miss having a stove inside? What if it's raining? No, we are not going to miss that stove top. For us, we have a number of options available to us. We do most of our cooking outside on the Blackstone anyway, and we recently purchased a Coleman one burner stove if we want to use a pan outside. Now if we're um, on shore power inside, I do have an induction cooktop that we can plug into that new pop-up electrical, or we can use the convection microwave. Worst case scenario is if it's raining and we're boondocking, we can always have cereal, we can do takeout or sandwiches. So why did we get rid of the stove completely? We could have gone to just use a different style. Now, originally we were thinking of maybe going ahead and getting rid of the three burner and just going down to a one or two burner. Um, there are many campers now coming with a two burner stove by Greystone. So we looked at that option originally, but they were constantly out of stock. So we decided to just go ahead and get rid of the stove top altogether to see how it would work for us. But we do have the option by not removing the gas line that's coming into the camper to go ahead and add a two burner cooktop in the future if we find this isn't working for us long term. Does the increased thickness of the countertop interfere with anything? So this new countertop is about a half inch thicker than the old countertop, but we made certain that the window latches would not interfere, um, and there's really nothing else that was impacted by the increased thickness of the countertop. So worked fine, and we kind of like the little bit of a chunkier look. Should we concern ourselves with any difference in weight? Well, the weight difference isn't as much as we would have thought. So the IKEA countertop is about, you know, twice the thickness of the original countertop. But the stove weighs this, the original countertop weighs this, and the IKEA countertop, once we cut it down and had cut out for the sink, weighed this. So as you can see, there really wasn't that much difference in the weights. But seriously, how easy is it to keep clean? It's actually not that hard to keep clean. Now we do always use a cutting board and we make sure not to let standing water pond on the new countertop. But right after we put it in, we coated a couple of layers of flaxseed oil on it. And we find that, you know, if, the, if anything does get a little bit of a nick, we just kind of coat it with that flaxseed oil and everything looks, you know, just like when we put it in and we've been using it three to four weeks of total days staying in it since we put it in and still looks brand new to me. So Linda, why did you choose Ikea? Well, originally we had contacted Forest River, but they couldn't give us an exact shipping cost and figuring that was going to be pretty pricey. And we weren't positive that the measurements were exact. So, because those countertops by Forest River, or the newer ones, are not wood, there would have been no cutting it down. So we started to look elsewhere, which led us to Ikea. Now, the reason we went with Ikea were a few reasons. One is the price point was great. And second of all, it had this, um, the oak countertop, which really matches some of these other items that we have done inside the camper. Linda, do you think any of these changes are gonna affect our resale? we can go ahead and put everything back together again if we choose, or if when we go to sell, somebody wants the original back together. So we saved the original countertop, the cooktop, and the sink that we had in here. And in less than an hour, we can go ahead and put it all back together. So that's it. <laughs> now we have some more interior mods planned this year. 
So if you'd like to see those, please remember to hit that subscribe button. And Desi, he always wants you to hit that notification bell.